Hello everybody, hope you all alright. So welcome to the Midlands Outdoors. Actually my new YouTube channel. So I'm gonna have some quite good content coming up for this over the year. Um, I'm going to do some of the canal lines again, uh, much more of the black country this time, so you're going to see history, more different kinds of interesting things. So feel free to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button as well on my videos, and I hope you enjoy. 2022 is going to be a big year for the content, especially mid-January, when they get out and about more. Obviously you can see as well, at the moment, the weather is not that great. It's been like this for a month. We keep having constant rain and obviously I've come in down here today because there's a river which obviously many of you know the uh, the river Stour which flows down by the corn greaves but it's right the way down there and I've heard someone tell me it's flooded but just right in front of me this is pretty much really interesting it's actually a very old relic of a place actually Horn Colliery a very old coal mine situated at the edge of Elzoin you can see some of the old buildings look just in there Obviously now you, you can't actually go in there no more though. It's um, all barricaded off. Uh, you, you used to be able to actually walk into it from the corner, but they've actually filled it in with soil now. So the black people are actually going inside it. But it is an amazing place just to see the history that lurks within there. Because I, I went in there years back as well when it's actually full of stuff in there as well. It was just interesting just to look at, but it's in much of a bad state now. I don't know what the plans are for this place. I think they are going to restore it, I believe. Um, but I, I have heard someone say they're going to build houses on here, but I don't quite know. So it is pretty much interesting to see what they're going to do with it. But if walking down here now, just going down the corner, you can see the old workshops just right on the corner. Look, I mean, the old architecture of them. I mean, these are the original buildings, they've been here for so many years, obviously dating back to the late 1800s. I think, yeah, late 1800s when this place was built and uh, placed as a mine. And it was obviously owned by the Garrett family. I believe it was something else before that as well. But there is quite a lot of interesting information history on this place. You can obviously Google it, find it out online. Just search Horn Colliery. You might find some interesting stuff on our photos. But look up there as well. Look at, look at the place though. It's been burnt. In the top windows up there, sat on fire. I dread to think what it's like inside there now compared to the very ever time I ever went here. But you can see, interesting as well, it's got the um, danger coal mining ground. Do not trespass up there, look. It's a bit hard to see because I'm on my GoPro. But interesting little sign. Newborn Colliery, situated between the towns of Crater Heath and Helsowin, are the 48 acre site to the north and east of Horn Lane. West of Horn and stretching south to the main Starbridge Road, was so called to distinguish itself from Old Horn Colliery which was very close by. It started life with an indenture dated 11th of April 1864. The parties to it were Richard Spooner of Brickworks in Worcester and Henry Marshall of Ward End, eight directors of the new British Iron Company. The company was based at South Sea House in London. Spooner and Ward owned land in and around Hall and the indenture gave them the mineral rights. Grant of the mineral rights was for 30 years from the 30th of June 1863 and they had to sink at least one pair of pits or shafts within five years. The coal and minerals were carried away in trucks on the coal railway that spanned in the River Stour past Timber Tree Colliery into the Corn Grease Railway sidings where they were tipped into trucks to be carried away. The new British Iron Company on the 23rd of June 1873 entered an interim agreement with Sheila Garrett, a Dudley coal master who owned Horn Bank Farm which was situated to the south side of Horn Lane. The mineral rights which Sheila Garrett granted to the company rested in such deposits as they might lie under the sloping fields of the farm, an area of 38 acres, 2 roots and 37 perches. The price was 17429 in 1894, the British Iron Company fell into debt and part of its assets were sold to Sheila Garrett and Son and Robert Fellows Limited. Sheila Garrett was one of those creditors who had died on the 24th of September 1893. The business continued in S. Garrett and Son. The partnership between Sheila and Job was dissolved on the 26th of March 1883. Job continued the business under its original name of Sheila Garrett and Son 
plaque with the firm's name and the date 1895 is still set on the wall of an office which was rebuilt when John Garrett took over the colliery. Life at the colliery during its closing years was without excitement. On one occasion, the stables were destroyed by fire, despite the combined efforts of both Hales over the Starbridge Fire Brigades, who took over an hour to bring the blaze under control. The fire was believed to be caused by wind, which blew flames from a fire close to the stables on one of the buildings where they ignited the woodwork. The colliery survived the 1921 strike, but succumbed to the 1926 general strike, during which the pumps were unmanned. The colliery's workings flooded and it was considered uneconomical to drain them when the strike ended. New ones two shafts were filled in and was required by covenants on the various leases. But yeah, you can just see around the corner now, you can just see a very old uh, little walkway where he's supposed to get inside the mine. It's obviously accompanied by all these like fence lines now. It's that many fence lines going all the way down, but that's the big, uh, there's a big wheel inside that one. It's got a date which you can see still, 1865. Really old. It is pretty much amazing back in the time when you used to be able to go and see this. But obviously now there's just no way to go and have a look at it. It's owned now, this place, I believe. Um, like I mentioned at the start, I think I'm going to do something with it. Hopefully, let's pray to actually restore these buildings back in a good state and keep, obviously keep one of them, because I know these are great listed buildings as well, many of you might know. But let's keep walking down, I'm going to go and check out the uh, the River Stour down the Corngreaves. Yeah, absolutely far weather though, it's just constantly been raining uh, since the early this morning. I've looked at the weather, we've got rain up until midnight I believe. It's this good job I've got this umbrella to keep me a bit dry. But I just felt, you know what, even though it's raining, I felt like it's still good just to come out and have a quick look down the uh, Hayden Hill itself by the Corn Greaves. Again, probably not going to spot too much wildlife today with the weather like this, but you never know what you see on your adventures. It's what I always like to do, just go out and about and to see what you bump into really. But yeah, so this channel, what we're on now, I'm going to be posting quite a lot of black country stuff in the mid-year. I am going to go back to the Black Country Museum and film quite a lot more stuff because um, I've really been behind on content to be fair, I'm the other channel, Urbex Street Productions I was going to plan to do more walking videos on that one but obviously because we've switched over to this one for our walking channel it's all going to be on this one so you're going to see nothing else but just walking and history stuff on this one just to keep you entertained so like I said, stay, stay tuned on the subscribe button here because it'll keep you up to date with my latest videos. too far away from the river stower now it's actually literally just down the corner from this like little factory and little work units just here in the corners there is believe or not around the corner i don't know if many of you might know it's actually been years since i've been up there though it's like a little public footpath which, which goes on the right uh, i walked that going back about a year ago now when i walked it so i decided to go right to the far back it's a shame i've got no photos to show you though or any old video footage of it but I decided to have a walk over and just like climb and go off, off path a little bit. I did actually find some old railway track. And I do believe when I looked it up, there used to actually be like an old little private mine workings down that other corner as well, down the back. So again, it is pretty much really interesting. I mean, just down here, past the end, the old section, the L zone bit down the corner at the top, where home colour is. It's just amazing just what history could be lurking there, very hidden. But... I looked it up online, I went on the coal authority just to check where the mine shafts are and yeah, believe it or not, there is actually like a little private mine up that public footpath right at the back but let's go and take a look at the river which is just down the corner actually down by the gumbo, I believe it could be flooded if not then, but well, somebody told me it was 
so we've actually got the river Stour which is actually flowing all the way down it doesn't to me it doesn't look that bad to be fair you can see the the river that's flowing down there with like little systems coming out and i do believe there is like a little sewage system that actually runs from the back of here i believe somewhere down the back but yeah it just looks like normal today so that's that path over there guys where i mentioned about where the other mine is just up there if you keep walking you'll come to an end of a path by a factory now if you get off path you can actually end up and there is actually a little hidden mine shafts what i'm open which i have seen very dangerous so just be careful if you do go and take a look and there is like again old railway track from the private mine if you manage to find it probably overgrown now from all the overgrowth but when i looked it was um half the overgrowth was pretty much dead so yeah we have got the gun barrel just here just right in front and i believe as well that is pretty much a really old building and a like little industrial state and works but you can see there is like a little date if i just show you the gun barrel date just right at the top I will read it out to you and see what the date says up there because it is a bit faded out. Uh, I don't know whether that is actually 19. I can't, I don't actually quite know. I'm going to Google this to be fair. There is a date at the top because it's in sandstone. It's pretty much really rubbed out really bad. So I can't pretty much tell the date of that one. But they do look pretty much really old and they've actually looked like they've actually done parts of the buildings up as well. But let's have a look online and see what the information is of it. So yeah, I will try and tell you a bit of information. It's a bit hard to have a brawl at the same time. So I am going to look it up now about the gun barrel and see what there actually is online. So let's have a look. The gun barrel, Hale Owen. Here is a map of gun barrel industrial centre, Hayseach, Cradley Heath B647JZ. All right, I didn't actually know that was actually part of Cradley Heath. I know Cradley Heath is like further down the back down there where the, the bottom end of the corn greaves is where you got corn greaves all if you keep going that's clearly leaf down there I didn't actually know that whether the maps are pretty much wrong I don't quite know but there is a bit of information here off, it does say clearly if they're on the on the website um, well it was actually selling this place was up for sale for 1.2 million um, I don't know if there's a bit of information down here uh, do, 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 do. don't actually say anything though uh, interesting information for the gun barrel let's have a look at this one so uh, again it was obviously sat in there that they wanted to use it for homes or something uh, where's the information it's pretty strange there isn't much on, on here about it let's have a look at another website it, actually there is here um, it's been situated next to the River Stower since the 1690. Oh well. And see if there's any more on here. Apparently, the water from a two acre pool powered the 1801 um, mill. Oh well. Uh, with a pair of 16 foot wheels. Uh, products produced at the site range from gun barrels, optical lenses, sword blades. Uh, spades, nails and also chains within the time so 1801 so pretty much a really mad date that is so it is quite dating quite back a bit so I don't know whether it's actually grey listed as well the gun barrel I reckon it's probably grey listed um, that's probably why it's still remain there today and I've done it out lot for little units but pretty much inf interesting information on that though so I thought I might mention that to you yeah what a quiet day today absolutely nobody around it's so quiet i think the rain is keeping people at bay from coming out today i've only seen the one odd jogger run down the main road but whether people will come out this afternoon but the rain has got to get really heavy at 12 i've looked up online on the bbc weather but just join but right by me now is actually the river stour which actually flows all the way down it's obviously making its long journey to the River Severn, which obviously now makes its way through the back ends of like down by Cradley down there, and obviously all the way to Starbridge, and then further on past a um, like long journey. It goes all the way to Stourton, and from there flows all the way to Starport. So you can just imagine the journey, and the source of this river is obviously by St. Canelms. 
just down the back again much interesting information down the back which is further behind me you've actually got the corn greaves hall and now the corn greaves hall is pretty much really historic as well i will pop a photo on for you now at the corn greaves hall so many of you know what it is so if you sit straight further down the back on the other main road from this like little path but again much history of dating back to when mr hayden best actually lived when in his young life at that hall he was derelict i believe as well my brother obviously went over there to take a look at it once when it's boarded up obviously you could get inside it back then but now it's obviously converted into apartments and the, what, there is actually still a few up for sale so i believe if you look online you might actually be able to see what it actually looks like today with inside them on a property agent website but you can obviously if you type in corn greaves all abandoned on google i believe you can also find some little interesting photos of when it was actually derelict inside the nice architecture the patterns of the walls i have looked it up it is really pretty interesting so if you are into that kind of stuff as well and want to learn more in interesting information look it up it does date back quite a bit but i'm actually going to make my way up to the hayden hill now i just thought because i was going to walk further down the back but it'd be interesting to see how quiet hayden hill is today I'm just approaching round now we've actually got one of the pools for the Hayden Hill Park which you can see so again it's a really old pool and I believe this old pool used to be there when Mr Hayden Best lived in it many many years ago but you can also say it's been kept in pretty much a really good shape they've been doing some work on it obviously putting like bricks up there keeps it maintained I don't know whether there's actually any fish within this pool but you can obviously all the wildlife there's that many birds on here again swans mallards moorhens i see like a few little odd birds in the trees around the sides i can see as well but swarming with wildlife on here there's always something to see again just sort of the Lisos park which is again one of my favorites there's always some wildlife to see but you can see the, the, the nice views of that look just around the corner So yeah, let's have to obviously look it up and let's just see if there's any history on Hayden Hill itself. So I'm going to give it a little bit of a search. Hayden Hill Park history. So obviously coming up now, it's got Hayden Hill Park. If I look at this one, uh, going down. So there is a bit of information here. So it's obviously talking to about the estate. Um, so it was obviously built by the Hayden family for over hundreds of years before passing to the Bars family by marriage in 1876. In 1877, he passed to George Alfred Hayden Best in 1839 to 1921. So you can obviously see the dates of when the big house at the top was obviously being lived in by the Hayden family. Um, so on his death in 1921, he's obviously telling you about how the council obviously took over the park and redeveloped it so it was obviously national lottery funded it was obviously um i think it was there it says uh, sandwell metropolitan borough council following a public subscription in 1922 and i do believe with the big house as well dating back to then they actually redone the house out several times to obviously make it into tea rooms for the public to open for the first time um again how it turned into a museum that was um I think it was dating quite a bit ago as well see if i can find anything about that um but lots on here you can obviously see as well so again there's even photos of mr hayden best which you can see just on there and there's like so many things down here about how it converted again into the park um 
There's so much. And obviously about corn greaves as well. And another interesting piece of information which I find interesting says, in the years following World War II, maintenance of the park ceased to be a civic priority. And by 1970, Hayden Hill House was in a poor state of repair and Hayden Hall had returned to a state of dereliction. I have heard the place was actually derelict. The big hall was abandoned many, many years ago. Remember when my mom told me when she seen it boarded up? Um, so in 1977, a major improvement program was instigated. Intensive restoration to the Hayden Hill House was carried out, but attempts to renovate the hall were undermined by a major fire, which left the property on the verge of collapse. While the council were unable to finance the repairs of the hall, they were also reluctant to remove it, owing its historic significance. Eventually, a renovation and rebuilding programme began in 1990. Progress was slow, but again due to a lack of funds. Again, it was lottery funded again, awarded uh, 2.1 million to the park in 1999 to protect the historic features and Mr Hayden Best designs. You can find quite a bit of information and a lot of history about Hayden Hill itself. If you just look it up on the internet and you type in Hayden Hill Park History, you will find so much. There's just so much to talk about. I will eventually, back into the summer, well, I'm in the mid-spring, I might actually come back down here and do a full feature length video covering from top to bottom of the history of this place so if you like that as well feel free to like and comment i will do it for you uh, this is just so much to talk about and i really want to go in the in the museum as well and discuss more about the stuff what's in there and show you more around in depth so we'll get around to that in mid-year for you so stay tuned i will get that content straight there for you